I recently took a look at every single cup in every single Mario Kart game and used mathematics to determine which were the worst cups and which were the best based on the tracks within those cups. And so I thought, why not use the same method to find out which games have the best and worst track selections? I explained my method in detail in that video, but I'll give a quick summary for those who haven't seen it. I'll be using the rankings of each of the tracks from my top 216 Mario Kart tracks video. The ranking of each of a game's individual tracks will be added together and divided by the number of tracks in said game to get the mean average. The closer a game scores to 216, the worse it is, and the opposite is true. If a game includes retro tracks, they will be taken into account too, as they are part of that game's track selection. Apart from Super Circuit's unlockable SNES courses, as I see them more like an additional extra, not part of the main track selection. But at the end of this video, for curiosity's sake, I will also look at how the games would rank based on Nitro tracks alone, to see which games have the best original courses. So let's just jump in, shall we? Here is the Mario Kart game with the worst track selection. I suppose Super Mario Kart being at the bottom was pretty obvious. It was the first game in the series, it was on the Super Nintendo, its tracks were always going to be basic compared to the games that came later on more powerful hardware. I mean, it has four Mario circuits for god's sake. Mario circuits tend to be some of the weaker tracks, and this game has four of them. Four of the bottom six tracks on the top 216 were from Super Mario Kart. Two of them, Bowser Castle 2 and Ghost Valley 2, I absolutely hate. This game doesn't exactly have the tightest controls, and so narrow tracks with tight corners or bottomless pits just aren't going to play well. On the other end of the scale, the best tracks in Super Mario Kart aren't exactly setting the world on fire. I'll always love this game's Rainbow Road, but that's the only track that was in the top 100. So yeah, obvious last place is obvious, let's move on. Many people see the Game Boy Advance as a sort of portable Super Nintendo, but in my eyes, the GBA version of Mario Kart is a massive step up from the SNES version, in terms of graphics, gameplay, and especially course design, it's a massive improvement. The only one I'd consider downright terrible is Snowland because of the constant jitter, but the other ones that were low on the list, Bowser Castle 1, Cheap Cheap Island and Peach Circuit for example, aren't exactly bad tracks, just kinda bland. Super Circuit also speeds ahead of Super Mario Kart in terms of track variety. It has a good few memorable tracks like Ribbon Road, Sky Garden, Cheeseland and Sunset Wilds. However, how memorable a track is doesn't always correlate with how good it is. And while courses like these are certainly good, no tracks from Super Circuit manage to crack the top 50 overall tracks. Mario Kart Super Circuit's track selection is good, but not quite up to the higher standards set by future entries. Next up, Mario Kart 64. Having all the older games at the bottom shows that Nintendo did a great job of coming up with better and better tracks as the series went on. Mario Kart 64 still plays great today, but its track selection is rather average across the board. By average, I mean tracks like Frap Snowland, Moo Moo Farm, Koopa Trooper Beach, Sherbet Land, none of these really stand out that much to me. There aren't any tracks in this game that I'd really consider my favourites. I mean, my two favourite tracks from this game are Banshee Boardwalk and Royal Raceway. Both great and fun tracks, but not mind-blowing like some of my favourites from other games. Like Super Circuit, there are no tracks that made it into my top 50. 64 does feature some of the more experimental tracks to grace the series. Some examples would be Calamari Desert, Toad's Turnpike and Yoshi Valley. These kind of tracks can be a bit hit or miss though. But unlike the 2D games, there are no tracks that I outright dislike. I find Wario Stadium a little boring because it's so long, but I don't hate it. The rest of the tracks range from being fine to pretty good. So yeah, pretty average, and that's why it's number 6. <laughs> I was very surprised that Mario Kart DS only came in at number 5. It has some of my favourite Mario Kart tracks of all time. Waluigi Pinball, Airship Fortress and TikTok Clock are incredible courses that are all placed within the top 15. And it's not just those tracks, there's Peach Gardens, Luigi's Mansion, excellent versions of Rainbow Road and Bowser's Castle. Mario Kart DS simply has some of the best tracks in the series. So why is it this low? Well, it's severely let down by its retro track selection, which is honestly pretty shocking. Now, to be fair, it didn't have many games to pull from at the time, so its weak selection was perhaps an inevitability. But that doesn't excuse the fact that pretty much every retro track originating from Double Dash is severely nerfed, feeling both slower and emptier in DS. As for the rest of the Nitro tracks, DS does have its fair share of forgettable ones like Figure 8 Circuit and a pretty weak Mario Circuit. 
Then there are many tracks that ended up placing around the middle of the bottom half of the list. Mario Kart DS is a series of highs and lows, so I suppose number 5 is a fitting place for it. Mario Kart Wii is almost the same story as Mario Kart DS. While it doesn't quite reach the same heights as the DS entry, it does something even better for its average score. The top 100 is absolutely littered with tracks from Mario Kart Wii. 16 of Wii's 32 tracks are within the top 100. That's good stuff. Even outside of the 8 best tracks highlighted here, we have some excellent ones including Grumble Volcano, Koopa Kate, Mushroom Gorge, Toad's Factory and more. Unfortunately, Mario Kart Wii is once again let down by its retro selection. It's not as bad as Mario Kart DS's, but there are quite a few lackluster choices. Like, why pick Yoshi Falls and Desert Hills as the first tracks to bring back from DS when there are so many better ones to choose from? Thankfully, there aren't any retro tracks that were downgraded for this game. In fact, many of them are improvements over the original. This game is known for its fan favourites like Coconut Mall and Maple Treeway, but those and the many other incredible tracks couldn't quite push it higher than number 4. Honestly, this was another surprising one for me. I did not expect Mario Kart Double Dash to be at number 3, especially looking at the top 4 from that game, Baby Park, Dino Dino Jungle, Rainbow Road and Luigi Circuit. I love all of those tracks, but nothing there quite sticks out as absolutely outstanding like some of the highest ranked tracks from DS and Wii. But what makes Double Dash place this high is simply its consistency. Think about it. Can you think of a bad track from Double Dash? Because I sure can't. The track that I like the least is Wario Coliseum, having placed it at 171. So many people have commented on other videos telling me that that was far too low, and please, comment the same thing on this video if you like. But that's still far higher than the worst course of any of the other games. And I still like Wario Coliseum. The second lowest is Peach Beach at 140. But a majority of the tracks made it into the top half of the list. And that's what I mean by consistency. All of the tracks in Double Dash are good at the very least, and many of them are great. If you decide to give Double Dash's All Cup Tour a spin today, you can rest assured that there will not be a bad track in the bunch. You probably knew Mario Kart 8 was going to be right near the top of the list before you even clicked this video. It's the latest one released with the most features, and Nintendo have had plenty of years of experience with making some excellent racetracks. Shall we just go through the list of the best ones? Electrodrome, Big Blue, Cloudtop Cruise, Hyrule Circuit, Sweet Sweet Canyon, Excite Bike Arena, Bowser's Castle, Twisted Mansion, Mount Wario, Dolphin Shoals, Mute City. Those are just some of the amazing tracks in this game. And those are only the Nitro ones. The retro tracks are also top notch. Not just the selection, but with the anti-gravity underwater and glider mechanics, Nintendo went all out in making these retro courses the best they can be. As a result, many of them are a lot better. Shoutouts to GBA Ribbon Road, my favourite Mario Kart track of all time, DS TikTok Clock, N64 Yoshi Valley, and a bunch more. It's a phenomenal choice of tracks, but it's not quite the best. You already know what number one is, so let's skip any unnecessary build up. By a tiny, tiny margin, Mario Kart 7 just beats out Mario Kart 8 for the top spot. This is one position that I did kind of see coming, as when I do think of the Mario Kart game with my favourite tracks, my mind does immediately go to 7. After all, it does show up 5 times among the top 10. It has far and away the best Rainbow Road, which is my favourite Nitro track, as well as other phenomenal tracks such as Melody Motorway, Wario's Galleon, DK Jungle and Piranha Plant Pipeway. In fact, many of the best retro courses in Mario Kart 8 come from 7. And in terms of retro courses, Mario Kart 7, while many of them aren't as big of upgrades as many of 8's, it has the best choice of tracks. DS Waluigi Pinball, Wii Coconut Mall, SNES Rainbow Road, it really is a best of Mario Kart history, unlike what the DS and Wii games had to offer. Well, Mario Kart 7 has the best tracks when both Nitro and Retro ones are taken into account, but I'm sure you're dying to know what the order would be if it was original tracks only. Since it's only out of 145 tracks now instead of 216, the score will be worse the closer it is to 145. So, here is how the scores and order would change. Huh. No change at all. To tell you the truth, I really thought Mario Kart 8 had a shot of overtaking 7, but the gap was made even bigger when just looking at the Nitro tracks. I guess for every Electrodrome and Big Blue, there is an Ice Ice Outpost and Bone Dry Dunes. And a fair chunk of Mario Kart 7's best tracks were Nitro ones. So I guess, any way you slice it, the victory goes to Mario Kart 7. It has the best tracks of any game in the series. 
Alright, that'll do it for this video. As always, be sure to give it a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more videos like this one. But until next time, have fun playing video games.